We're going to go over another passing concept. So it's good, man. We're kind of building on this stuff, right? I mean, we went over double slants, Y stick, levels, smash, snag. Um, did we go over snag? Yeah, we did. I had a whole uh, video on, on a specific play that I ran, but snag is a concept you can run, and it's really good against single high, specifically against cover three. Um, and you want a really good player running that corner route because if you happen to get man-to-man -man defense, um, you really want to attack the corner. I'm already rambling here. So let's get right to our next concept. This is probably the concept I abuse the most in the game. And it's not even close. And it's the Salem concept. Um, now you may say, well, you know, that must mean Salem is overpowered. No, it's not. Okay. When you get to a point to where, I don't know if you guys watch poker. Um, I used to watch poker, but, um, you know, some people have different styles. Some are tight, really tight as a rock. It means they hold their cards. They, they wait till they get really good cards before they play them. Some players are really, really loose. They play a lot of different goofy looking hands, you know, five, six suited, seven, eight suited, you know, hands that are not great. But they get in a lot of pots and they, you know, mix it up and et cetera. Some have a style like medium, right? And they asked what used to be probably the best player in the world. And they were like, hey, what, what's your style? And he said, I don't have one. I, I understand that answer. Like that's the most, that's, the, that's where you want to be. Where you don't have a style. My style is the counter to whatever it is that you're doing. So... You know, if you're defending this part of the field and you're weak over here, I'm going to attack the weakness over here. And whatever it needs to be done to attack that, that's what I'm going to run. If you're strong on this side of the field and you're weak over here, well, then I'm going to attack over here. Like, I don't necessarily, like, if you have a specific style, you know, it's not, it's not nothing wrong with it. But if you get to a point to where you really don't have a style, you're just extremely adaptable. You attack wherever the weakness is. Um... Like, how can you be stopped? You know, I mean, granted, there's a lot more variables to it, right? I mean, it's just not gray. It's, it's not black and white like that. It's a lot of gray area. But when you get to a point, so that's the re I said all that just to say the reason why I run a lot of Salem is because I run into a lot of cover three. Cover three zone all over the place. Cover four drop zone, right? And, you know, the counter to that is to get high low reads on zone defenders wherever they are, because it's mostly spot drop coverage, right? So let's go ahead and get into the Salem concept. So I went all that just, to, I went through all that just to say, you know, that was the reason why I run Salem a lot. You know, it's not, I don't run it a lot because I just like it. I run it a lot because it counters what a lot of people play and that's cover three and cover four drop zone, that sort of stuff. So this is Salem. Salem is where you have an inside receiver running something underneath, like a spot route, a hitch, or something of that nature. And then someone on the outside of that is running like a dig pattern over the top of that. That's it. So where's this? I mean, you can spot the Salem concept here. It's right here, right? Um, the game is mad. Like, oh, man, don't lose it. Don't lose it. So, you, like, you go to the concept menu and you, okay, I want to run Salem. And then you see this. What, what is this, man? This is not Salem. This is not Salem. I, these guys are horrible. Hey, whatever, man. But you, you got Salem here. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. You got Salem here. So, you know, I recorded this a long time ago. So I don't know what I did here. So, yeah, you got Salem here. Now, one thing I want to go over is on something like this, I would motion the tight end out of there. And you'll see why. Okay, but here you got Salem here. Again, I would motion this tight end out of there. Salem there. So this is the Buccaneers playbook. Now I'm gonna, I believe I'm going to go to some type of zone. So this is cover two. So the idea is, think about your zone coverages, right? Where it's, you know, spot drop zone. Everyone's going to get to a landmark, white and get depth, that sort of thing, right? So this is cover two. You know, this guy's deep half. Deep half. This guy's cover two. You know, vertical hook. Three receiver hook, he should buzz this way and then climb up field on a vertical route. And this guy's like vertical hook, right? Okay, look at the Salem, right? Think about, you got to think of the shell, the outer shell of the coverage. Those guys are playing 
I hate to use the word passive, but they're playing a lot more cautious, right? So like your your cover three corners on the outside, you know, they're they're gonna bail. They don't want nothing to get behind them because they are the outer shell of the defense. The outer shell means if something gets outside of that shell, that's a touchdown, right? So on this particular play, this guy really isn't the outer shell here. It's really the deep half safeties. If something were to get behind them, that's a touchdown, right? So because of that, you know, because of the nature of that, these guys don't want nothing to get behind them. So again, they're going to drop, widen, get deft, get to their landmarks and not let nothing to get behind them, right? That's the way I look at it. I look at it that way because it makes it easier to see um, route conce concepts underneath and how they work. You know, you may see the play art of cover two and think, okay, this dig route will never be open. Well, this guy's going to be climbing, playing over the top. You know, if this guy just runs a semi-good route, it, I mean, that deep pass safety has nothing to do with that route, right? So I want you to think about when this player on this dig route reach, reaches about here, Think about this player here. What, what is he going to do, right? That's We're vertically stretching this defender. Why? Because we have a route underneath on the same vertical plane as this player. So when he, he drops back and widens and he sees this little spot route underneath, this little hitch, you know, he can make a decision. Are you going to jump that route? If you do, the window to hit this deep dig pattern behind you is going to be wide open, Right? If you decide to continue to backpedal and play into this window, well, then we can just throw it underneath to our underneath guy, turn around and get get yardage. Maybe whip outside, get yardage, etc. That's, in essence, that's the Salem. That's it, right? That It's designed to attack, you know, and put a defender in a bind, in, in a conflict. You have to make a decision on who you're going to defend. Now, in man-to-man -man coverage, is different because this guy will be just running with him. He will be running with him, let's say, uh, you know, covered two, two man, right? So it's a little bit different. I mean, this guy typically wouldn't be open. It's not a, a very good route against that, you know. But if you have a really good receiver on the outside, this is what I mean by, you know, packaging concepts together that can beat man-to-man -man and zone. When you reach that world, you make your world a lot easier but if you have bad players on the outside I don't want to say bad but not they're not good enough you know then you can't get away with that then you have to do things like have a specific zone beater on one side or a man beater on the other side um, if you don't know what's going on if you know it's cover three zone then you dial up the perfect play to deal with that if you know it's man you got to manufacture ways to get your receivers open if they can't get open that sort of thing I mean the tr strategies are endless so let's go ahead and run it So look, you see how, again, it's cover two. Look where the safety is. Is he going to impact a deep in route here? Absolutely not, right? He's playing way too cautious because he's the outer shell of the defense, right? Cover two corner is going to do what he's supposed to do. He's going to play cloud flat, soft squat, whatever he's going to do, right? Uh, soft squat would be better in this instance because he would convert to man-to-man -man coverage here, right? But you're hoping that your player would get inside leverage on that anyways. Now... So, again, he's about to reach this plane. This guy has to make a decision. And as we see, he's made his decision. So we can go ahead and throw that deep dig pattern wide open. Right? That's what the Salem concept is all about. I don't know why I went to replay here, but I'll just show it without stopping. As we see, he creeps up. We're eyeing that second defender in. As soon as he creeps, okay. Our window is wide open. So that's against cover two. This is cover three. Same thing. Look, you see how he creeps up into that window right there? Right? The dig pattern is wide open. Okay, so now I went to the Salem concept in the Chiefs playbook, a different playbook, and we can see what they have, right? So they have Y sale over here. So they have a concept over here. They're going to flood. They got a flood uh, concept on this side. Well, sale, right? But on this side, they have the Salem concept, right? So where's the Salem concept here? Well, I would say it's about here, right? Because you have the second player, the number two, running something underneath, a little spot route, you know, a little hitch, whatever it is. You have this guy running a route right over the top of that, attacking the interior of the defense. 
Now, I don't like it with a post pattern behind because he could run into the deep middle safety, but this route you'll see um, is almost like a skinny, I don't want to say a skinny post because it's a lot more flatter than that, but it's it looks more like a dig than a post pattern, okay? Um, here you see the Salem concept here. Again, I would motion this tight end out of there because what he typically does is he drives a defender further up the field who can actually get in the window of the dig pattern. So you kind of, this is terrible play design right here. You're, you're like fighting against yourself with what's going on here. This is just terrible. You know, if you're going to have your tight end over here, I would have him run something. If you want to keep him on this side, I would have him run maybe like a you know, outside release and then burn it inside on like a in pattern, right? So then you would have the Salem concept here um, and then, you know, like a high load read running across the field, right? That's neither here nor there, though. So let's go to a different one and play it. Um, this game, dude, it's just... I guess they think this is the Salem. Like, they, you know, I, I don't know. With a little pattern like that and a slant behind it, it's not a lot of space. This actually works in the goal line, I think. I think I ran it before. But traditionally, this is more what we're going for. So, you know, as stated, you know, when you understand the concept, you that's why concepts are so powerful, dude. Like, you don't have to, you could have never ran this play before in your life, ever. You're in the middle of a game online, fourth quarter, final drive. This guy's been running cover three for the last two drives, like every other play, 80% of his plays, whatever. And you come out and he's in, well, not you don't come out, but you're like, you know what? This guy's probably going to run the same stuff. I'm going to go to Salem. And you see this play and you're like, hey, I can run it. You've never ran it before in your life. But because you understand the concepts, it doesn't matter that you've never ran it. You understand how everything is going to go within a play. You know, and when you understand things, you'll you'll see like if you were to have like a, a, um, a slot right here running up the field, you would know just based upon how the concept works. I got to motion this guy out of here. That's stupid, right? You would know that just because you know how the concept works. But again, as I stated in another video, instead of learning plays, you should learn concepts. Because when you learn concepts, instead of learning one play, you've learned you know, 600 plays. Because any play that has that concept in it, you can run it, right? So we're going to run it against cover three. Look, turns. So this defender in cover three, you know, a little hook curl guy, sees that, he wants to jump it. Look at the window that's created behind him wide open matter of fact let's go back i didn't even see that play this is a beautiful play by the chiefs right here this shreds cover three look at this we have this spot route over here so that pulls the hook curl the i didn't see this until just now that pulls the hook curl there then you have this route right here that pulls the hook curl here so look at the window it creates against cover three look how both of those guys look at it. it's just wide open that's that's a great play right there, right? That's a good play. That's good play design. Yeah, you know, and then you have the uh, the concept we went over. I think the last concept we went over was uh, snag. You know, you really got that going over here, right? So you know, imagine imagine you have like your best route runner right here. This is what I mean. What I was saying in the beginning of the video when I started rambling in a snag concept. Like, if you were to run this play it, and you see single high, you, you should, like, jump for joy, right? Because you'd be like, I don't care what you're doing. Uh, we have a positive gain here. I mean, 15 yards maybe, right? If you're running a zone, then I can look more to this side because I like how the spot route dr drags this guy, you know, and then this will drag this other hook curl defender, and he'll be right in the window here. If you're playing man-to-man, -man, then we can look one two and then to three but i would look more high low because if your best player is here you know he should be able to beat this guy on his route you know and he would come up on his spot route he would match that you know etc you know and it's away from the safety so again you're, you're you won't want your best route runner running the corner route in the snag so that's that i think i ran it again or did i replay and it's just wide open dude like that's because of the concept of the play. 
So this is the Panthers. I went to the Panthers playbook. So again, we have the sale here. Pretty much like the same play, right? Um, yo, someone like needs to... Dude... Oh my goodness, okay. Like, it's little stuff like this tells me that these guys are just pure, like, incompetent, man. I'm not going to even... <laughs> if, if I were to go to, like, an interview to question the EA developers, I would, yeah, I would drill them on just tactical stuff. Like, why is this wrong? Why is this defense wrong? Why don't you have cover seven in the game? Why don't you have uh, this in the game? Why don't you have that in the game, et cetera? You know, I would even go to, like where it would be kind of embarrassing. I would be like, hey, why is it when I go into the Salem folder for the route concept of Salem, I see stuff like this in it? What is this? That's not, Sa what, that's not Salem. Right? I think this is the dagger concept. Why is it, why is this here? Like, this just shows incompetence, man. Well, it is what it is. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm missing something. You know, maybe I'm a little tired. You know, maybe I'll see it later after I, I post this video and I'll feel stupid, but uh, I don't see Salem here. So, I mean, one thing you could do is you can hot route this guy right here into a hitch. You know, you see how you can, you can put the concept in the play by just changing one player. Him running up the field and this guy running a dig is not Salem, to my understanding. I don't know. Whatever, dude. Let's see what else they got in, in Panthers. And then I'll show you some quick gameplay footage. Why am I taking forever to get to the next screen? What am I doing? Come on, man. There it is. This looks like the same play. Uh, here we got pretty much close to the same deal. I mean, yeah, it's a post pattern, but it still attacks the area right behind the hitch pattern. You know, so that's pretty nice. And here we see we have this. I guess this is something you can really run in the goal line. So again, the same deal little hitch and then he's attacking the area right behind it. You're trying to put defenders into conflict, right? So this is the bears, obviously. So I, you know, I just went to four different playbooks to show you, you know, the different plays that they have under the, the Salem concept. So yeah, this is the, the one with the skinny post that I decided to check out. Look, he, he drew up. So, this area is wide open, so this, this play is pretty good because this is a skinny post attacking the area right there. I guess you can see the difference between the Chiefs play and the Bears play, right? Uh, I think that I like the Chiefs better in that one. So this is my um, me playing online against someone. And this play, PAY corner, is a play I love to run because, again, we have the Salem concept on this side. And then we're kind of flooding the defense on this side, but I just love running Salem again, because I find myself running against a lot of, you know, zone coverages. If people run cover four drop zone, you can run it. They run cover three sky, you can run it. Cover two zone, you know, you can attack that vertical hook player to second defender in. You know, you will love this concept. All you have to do is be reactionary and read the second defender in who's being attacked by the you know, the little route underneath and the route behind them. That's it. So here, this is an irregularity right here. I usually almost always throw the dig behind because the guy, the hook curl or the vertical hook always bites on that. But in this particular instance, this is one of the rarer occurrences where this guy was a user. I didn't see it till post-snap, I think. Oh no, I saw it pre-snap. I had to have. Maybe I didn't. Let's see. Snap the ball. Yep, that's the user. When I see him climb up there, okay, well, go underneath. I know it's zone. Should have threw it earlier, but look at that. We pick up 13 yards. A little, like, spot route. He was playing Tampa 2, but he was the second defender in right here. This is cover 3. Change the mic. Snap. Look at him. Getting ready to bite the bait. Look at this window. 
You see this window? Throw the ball in the window. I mean, Luke Longley can make this throw. Is that like 20 yards? So I'll leave it at that. Um, again, so that's another concept we've added on there. So, you know, this guy's good against like double high. This guy's good against single high. This guy's good against double high. This guy's good against uh, like cover two. Stacks good against single high, and this is good against zone, right? So you're seeing the strengths and weak, well, not even the weaknesses, just really the strengths of these, how you can utilize these, incorporate this into your plays, your playbooks. Use this stuff, man. I'm telling you, when you start just using this, I mean, you're, you're not going to be that gimmicky player who, uh, you know, picks the Ravens and runs around like a chicken with his head cut off behind the line of scrimmage looking for someone, to, you know, you hot route, slant, 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 drag, slant, slant. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be one of those players. You're going to actually look like an, an NFL offense. Just shredding your opponent down the field, you know, make them feel like like you're in their head, right? So, I'll leave it at that, and hope you enjoy it.